regardless, um, I have been using the um, which was a switch is a relatively new switch over from my end um, from my end of cordless um, with the detachable batteries. I switched to um, Herringer and um, the Opal. And I was the reason why all my um, all my Andes were out for service, and um, it was in the middle of pandemic. Service was bad, so yeah. my backups, my backups, and my backups were were in the need of get, of getting maintenance. So um, you know, I got it, and again, this clipper kind of forces you to re and reinstate good habits with oiling your blades. I know a lot of people say, "I oil my blades every day." There's many people that don't, and it shows. Um, and you know, I would get lazy with it. And with this clipper, it's really powerful. Um, this one, I don't use the clipper back. This is just for what I'm going to use a, a wide blade or a wide guide comb on top of a wide blade or shave down or, you know, or just something that I just want to grab a clipper and not have my back attached to yeah. it. Um, and it's a really powerful clipper. Um, it gets the job done and I've been really impressed with it. Um, now for one that I use with my clipper back, um, I use an Andis Excel five speed. Um, it has been my go-to for my clipper back for a very specific reason because I have put on the clipper back attachment on every single clipper I've ever used in my entire life. And, um, what I like about it with the Andis Excel corded is a you do have the speed so you can adjust the speeds very easily the handle is very aerodynamic and it is shaped almost like a pencil so yeah. in terms of when you have the back hose you're adding weight and a new sensation so what i like about when i'm working with and i work very 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 fast and i work very 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 quick um and i don't feel any strain on my forearm um, on my wrist and on my movements and i feel like i can manipulate the clipper back and everything very 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 efficiently i've been very happy with it um so yeah those are my four um I, and i'm just going to add up a quick plug with a lot of people that tend to shy away from batteries or cordless clippers um so i used to get and i used to freaking you know get on the internet and say man they're really changing the quality of our shit and it's not working these batteries yeah. are dying <laughs> Then I realized that um, there was a huge user error on my part, and I learned this in two team. And um, I charge all my stuff, and then when everything's charged, and I do it all at the same time, I take all the cords, all the bases, everything that comes to charge those, those three devices that I listed, and I put them in a, in a Ziploc bag, and I put it in the little abyss hole that it all wagon tails are all mobile vans and we all have a hole yeah. where all the shit goes where we don't want to deal with yep and um and i know you're on i know you know what i'm talking yep. about <laughs> so um so um i will not charge my shit until it's dead until it dies i will not charge it for the health of your lithium batteries you charge you don't charge when it goes down to dip and this is the same for our phone um, you don't charge when it goes down a bar or it's about to die. You let it die. You have to physically let it die. Your lithium batteries will last you for years and years. No problems, no issues. But if you keep plugging in or, and one of the things is a manufacturer, you know, a manufacturer design error. They design our clippers to be held and cradled in these things, but yeah. also your effing charger. So as a result, nobody's dumb for doing that because I did that. I'm like, oh, look. This goes right here, and yeah. oh, it's already <laughs> plugged in. And yeah. you're 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 literally you're compromising the health of your lithium battery. And also, you know, when you plug in at night, you lose shit plugged in. It's a recipe for explosions, fires, yeah, all sorts point. of unsafe shit. So, with you know, to maintain the health and longevity and safety of your lithium products, um, clippers, equipment, anything plug in and you'd be surprised. a lot of your shit even with heavy use will last like 10 days you won't get two weeks i've tried but you'll usually you get, get 10, the 10 days. working days of power <laughs> awesome <laughs> that's good i've heard i heard about that too with the lithium batteries but i think it that's something a lot of people don't realize and, it, and it's for the exact reason that you said it really is just this reason that there's something that i'm supposed to put these clippers in and yeah. I mean, why wouldn't I? It came with, I paid for it. <laughs> That's know? where it that, belongs. What, 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 what doesn't help the argument is a lot of people kind of think 
the same thing with their cell phones. So nowadays, cell phone technology and their charging system where it's called the trickle effect. So even though force a habit, we'll keep our phones plugged in 24 seven. Yeah. Um, it will still not put it to 90, 99% or a hundred percent it will trickle its charge if you have not unplugged it once in custody. And unfortunately, yeah. our products that we, the other lithium products we have, haven't caught on to that trickle technology. So if you leave things charged constantly, you are cutting the life of that battery half and, you know, running the risk of, you know, explosions, which are never fun. Yeah, no, nobody wants that. <laughs> you Fight won. the power. Yeah. They don't want you to know that. Fight the power, <laughs> maintain your batteries, don't give them any more money than you already did. Exactly. <laughs> Warrants only, and listen, when you read your warranties, and listen, I come from a generation when we went to the bathroom, we didn't have our phone, we didn't have phones to scroll through. Yeah. We read instructions, warranties, shit we signed. We right? you your hat off. My dad the played cards. <laughs> so, like, you, you read shit, and so, like, literally, one day I didn't have my phone, and just for whatever reason, and this fucking warranty for um, a, 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 a warranty. And I'm reading this shit, and I'm like, oh, there's a whole bunch of user errors that they do not cover, and keeping it plugged in all the time is like one of them. That's and they can crazy. tell if you're doing it. Uh, <laughs> Laura, saving everybody's money. Just sitting yeah. on the toilet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I, I, sitting I, on the I, toilet. I, the I, world I, needs to know. <laughs> you know, we used to know these things. We uh, listen as we end. You know what? For the for for so many years, we have good. Something breaks, man. We got money. We just buy more shit. We just buy more yeah, shit. No, no, no. We're running into a time where like you invested in this thing. Times are rough, and they're not going to get much mm -hmm. better. And you know, the who's going to be the winner surviving twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three? The winner is going to be. Who's got their equipment, their parts, their chip maintained? So it's important that yeah. you take care of your clippers, you take care of your blades, you take care of your dryers. Whether you can afford it or not, you need to reevaluate and adjust the things you need to do. Learn how to do it yourself if you have to, but you have yeah. to maintain your yeah. stuff because, especially after the pandemic happened, like, did you anybody ever try contacting Wall during the pandemic? It's like, Please hang up and don't call for six months. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it's, it, it, Have it, you it, tried it, online? Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's literally, it was an eye opener for me to really be on top of my shit and to, um, and to have backup parts and to maintain my stuff and to take care of it. Because at the end of the day, you know, something breaks and you need to call somebody. You know, like, oh, I can't call somebody. Let me just hop on Amazon. And there's nothing to order. And you know, yeah, financially, yeah. it just yeah. kicks you in the gut too when you're just throwing money out the window. And you know, as we enter in this time, the time of plenty when it comes to dog grooming, you know, we enter in a recession, things get financially tough for people. Anybody that groomed in the mid 2000s remembered their fluffy dogs mm -hmm. are like, hey, can we stretch this like 16 weeks? I love you, but I love, I love food and gas more. <laughs> Right. So gave him down exactly. nose to asshole, like, and just call it a day, yeah. smack a bow on it. We'll see you in six yeah. months. <laughs> yep. Like that is a reality and wide. So you really, really, really like the time of plenty. It's it's the time of really monitoring what you're spending on your gear. And I'm gonna I say this as an equipment junkie. Yeah. Yeah. You really, really, really got to get the most out of your tools and the most out of your equipment, and you know, make it make it last. Yeah. Awesome. And then Yvonne, clippers for you. <laughs> I'm the old fashioned lady. <laughs> I still Does have the square. <laughs> I still have the square and this two speed. And I found them on Amazon and I bought four pair and I stashed them. <laughs> um, oh my god, I so, know I know what you're talking yeah, about. The only but you know, they're they're an awesome clipper. They're a workhorse clipper. They last they don't forever. Get you change the blade drive and the hinge, and they will never do you wrong. I'm just saying. Um, I've tried some of the full size cordless clippers, and I absolutely hate them. I think they are bottom heavy, and they mm -hmm. hurt my hand like uh, you would not believe. I just I can't stand them. Um, I hope that they are getting better and better, and that the you know, they're figuring out where to place these batteries or something else. But 
I, I'm telling you right now, you can't possibly use a cordless clipper where everything is in the bottom of it and have it be ergonomic. You can get yeah. used to it. You can build muscle to compensate if you're, you know, clipping properly, but those fuckers are heavy. And mm -hmm. I am so used to that. And is, and, and even with my clipper vac hose, my, my hand V clipper vac hose weighs like two ounces. Yeah. You know, it's not a heavy piece of equipment and, you know, you can get them to, to, to go on to anything. And I'd love it if we have time to talk about clipper vacs, that would be awesome. But uh, that's, that's my go-to clipper. That's all I use for my body, my heavy bot, my all over body work. And then I use those little Kodos clippers for poodle feed and hygiene areas and all of that kind of yeah. thing. And, you know, those are, I mean, those are essentially, you know, a, uh, call them a disposable clipper if you want to. When they eventually die, it's 40 bucks. You're going to throw it in the trash. Um, because I'm telling you right now, they last me longer than those, than the walls ever have. And, you know, yes, you can send them to wall and they'll refurbish them and send mm -hmm. them back to you. But within six months, they're crap again. And I loved them. Don't get me wrong. And I, you know, I still have an Arco that I use as a backup. I don't like the Bravura because this, the same issue, you know, like Laura was saying, you know, you, you have a tendency to try to keep it plugged in all the time. Yeah. Well, if I have to keep it plugged in all the time, it's useless to me. Yeah. Um, the Arcos, at least they had two batteries. You take the batteries yeah. in and out. You have one battery charging, you run the other one down and you switch them out. And that kind of kept you from overcharging batteries. Um, and it was also, if you have a dead battery, you can still use the clipper because you have another battery. So for me, that was the selling point for the Arco, even when they started coming out with all these newer ones, the, yeah. the Bravura and, you know, and all these other ones that you just plug into the bottom because, you know, they say, oh, you know, you got to run them down to nothing. Well, if I run it down to nothing and I'm halfway, I only got two poodle feet done on a dog. I got two more poodle feet to go. What am I going to do? It's mm -hmm. art. So, yeah. <laughs> it's art. <laughs> you know, then you, you know, then you're going back to your, you know, your 15 blade on your clipper vac that you haven't done in 15 years. And you're like, oh God, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> so, um, I just, you know, so that's for me, um, my, my, uh, obsession is in scissors and in other equipment. It's not in clippers because when I find what I like, I, I, I am hard and fast and I just stick to it. Um, yeah. all the, and all of the newer clippers I've ever tried have been very disappointing to me. Something has always gone wrong immediately within just a few months there's been a, a well, cord it's a, problem it's a, or a yeah. chart so a big know, deal just, it's always investment you get let down it, it'll turn mm -hmm. you yeah. off for 10 years yeah and now oh my god clippers are like 300 400 dollars ridiculous what the fuck is that i mean oh, yeah. that's just crazy to me i know i'm old but that's just crazy to me that's just yeah. uh, well and then during the pandemic too where you couldn't find anything like on Amazon, yeah. you'd find it, right? You're like, oh man, I, I found these clippers that I, I need or whatever. But then you have some scalper that came in and mm -hmm. now the wall KM10 is like 600 something dollars. Yeah. Like that was a that, that was an issue for, that's why I don't have one yet. Cause they're still right. like, they're still pretty expensive. Cause I want to say wall was having a huge problem getting, um, I guess what they needed in to, to build all this or something mm -hmm. and you couldn't find any other stuff, couldn't find their clippers. Um, Levi, thanks for your Sorry. input. Um, but me personally, <laughs> I like wall. I liked my KM10 when I had it. Um, and I love using my Bravura. And sometimes I'll do full body with my Bravura and my attachment yep. combs. And it always comes out looking amazing. Um, and then I really only like to take my, my big corded clippers out. Right now I have Andis. Um, and that's really for like super shave downs, like something that I know I'm not going to get through with my Bravura, but otherwise I, I love that. And then I also got, I don't know if you guys have seen it, the Kenji, like it's like a four or five and one that they came out with. I got theirs. It's, it's like, the have, Bravura. have you, how do you like, how do you like the four, the four in one? Because I dismissed the idea after one variance with Kenji. How do you like the four in one with that, that model? Um, the big thing for me is that I was able to buy the, like, they have them like 3F through 
7F blades that you can get and, and attach it onto there. And the big thing with those clippers is they make like no sound and hardly any vibration. And you have a one to five strength with the clipper. So when I have like those really old dogs that like, if you even like touch them, they'll freak out. I can go all the way down to the one setting on this and, you know, let them feel it first and then come back with the blade. And I, I'm able to get these dogs done that if I didn't have that clipper, I would have been able to do it. So I like that. Now, the one thing with the clippers, and I think it's more the blades, if you don't come in just right down onto that dog, it will do an indent. Like I had to like train myself to bring these clippers down a very specific way. And I've never had that issue with any other blades on any other clippers, but otherwise, I mean, I like them. I think the quality is good. I, I haven't had an issue. It's just, you have to have two different, like there's a detailer and then there's like the one that comes with it. And then that's like on these clippers on one side, it's telling you the measurements like the four in one measurements if you're using the detailer. And then on the other side of the clipper, it tells you the measurements if you're using the one that came with it. Oh, That's confusing. Spider. So, but otherwise, no, they're great with like the dogs that hate clippers. Mm. And I hope, are you okay, Laura, with the spider? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, just a really like, I have this light here and a spider was crawling across and its shadow looked so much. Fucking bigger. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I hope that answers your question with the Kenji. Maybe. No, it <laughs> Okay, good. Um, all right. So let's I'm just gonna switch to this one. It, if we have time after the scissors, Yvonne, I'll look at the okay. talk about the clipper back thing you were talking okay. about. Um Yep. But combs, I wanted to briefly talk about combs. Um, I want to know how do you guys like when they do that coating? It's normally like a black coating on it. Um, what is your preferred comb? What's the one you're always picking up? I mean, I know we have different combs for different things, but just throughout your day. And then your opinion on like, like the crescent moon combs and that kind of thing. So Brie, what are your thoughts? Cause, cause you just laughed. <laughs> well, I've always wanted one. People tell me they're not really worth the hype, but I've never been able to like fork over the money for one new. Uh, I just like the hype of it mostly. I think it looks pretty. I like that it's called a half moon. Yeah. But other got, than that. You wanna throw $80 down for it? That's no, not really. The... the same way I don't wanna spend uh, 60, $70 on a, on a coral brush. Yeah. <laughs> I have yeah, one. Uh, I have one. You can have free. I hate the thing. I'll take it for a spin, but I mean, otherwise, uh, I just love a uh, for. A, I love a good deal. I think the 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 brand is Great Paw or or Paw Brothers, something like that. Yeah. And it's a it's a budget affordability, but when it comes to like the cheaper stuff, this Great Paw brand. I mean, it's big. It's this big, and I use yeah. that on everything from my giant dogs to some of my smaller ones then i remember i have smaller combs for yeah. smaller dogs but <laughs> but in terms of durability this thing has fallen off tables i mean i was sick of losing teeth you know yeah. of of buying mm -hmm. combs at trade shows or out of catalogs and before i know it i'm dropping teeth or i'm bending teeth yeah now i also realized maybe i just got to check myself when i'm trying to like attack these mats and i'm taking one little tooth and i'm pulling at this mat Maybe it, that comb just isn't meant for that kind of work. Yeah. And maybe those mats just need to be shaved out. Yeah. But <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I like a good solid comb that uh, isn't too heavy or too light. Sometimes the two light ones, I have a tendency to fling. Yeah. I have absolutely <laughs> flung light equipment out of my hands because it's just too like feathery. Um, I used a comb that was about yay big and it had large spaces, like two fingers worth of a gap. And that was amazing for fluffing out my poodle that already yeah. had no knots in it. But I mean, on regular dogs, I absolutely couldn't, couldn't use that. Cause as soon as I get snagged, I'm sure that one tooth is going to be like, <laughs> yeah. Out of what the five teeth that are on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Laura, what about you? 
Um, so I am a I am a comb whore. I am an Utsumi freaking whore. They could literally like make a bag of shit and write Utsumi on it, and I would see. Here is my. Here's a blank check, Maddox. Please put take my I money. I. Um. So. But, but I have been through I all the pros and all the cons with Utsumi. Utsumi, um, fine finishing detailing combs. I have the nine incher. I've got the half moon. I've got the combo one, um, and I also have their economic ones, which mm. are just they remind me of a greyhound comb, just longer teeth, and again, it's hard. They're they're hard. They're it's you ain't bending that shit. That yeah. that that is a hardcore. That is a hardcore comb. So with um, Utsumi, I went through all the things, like I did shit with it that I shouldn't have, then it bent them and I got sad and I tried to bend it back. And once you <laughs> bent it, you will stab yourself in the hand with it and it hurts. Mm -hmm. um, so I've learned a process with, <coughs> with, my, with my detail work with the Utsumi combs. I keep my, you know, after I'm done bluff drying, I then take my, my cheaper comb, which goes from medium to large and I go through the body of the coat. I go head to toe everywhere I need to go. Then I take my, my fine finishing comb to prepare for scissor work. And the second I hit a snag, which snags happen, mm -hmm. I don't go, hey, I can make this come out just for a little guy, it's fine. I take the Asumi comb and I put it to the side <laughs> and yeah. I pick up the other comb and I mess with it this way. Since, since, um. You know, I really feel like I've mastered my process with my prep work. And um, again, like Bree had mentioned, my dryer is my brush. My dryer mm -hmm. does so much of the work for me. It work hand in hand with my with my procedure, the dryer. So by the time that dog has been brushed and fluffed, any little tiny pin mat or any little snag, it's going to just come out like butter. Yeah. And um, so I just make sure to just check myself before I wreck an expensive tool because I really do like how the Utsumi combs feel in my hand. They're weightless. And I know a lot of, a number of other companies get their own versions of it. Yes. Um, and it's me, it's not the same. And it could be because I'm, I'm, I'm very loyal to the brand. And I, as I mentioned, I'm an absolute whore over their products. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if they, I've always felt that, all right, this comb dollars cheaper, but it's not an Utsumi. It's like buying a knockoff Louis Vuitton bag. It's like, mm -hmm. it, it's nice. It looks nice, but it's not. <laughs> I know it's a lie. Wow, I they should pay you. So, um, yeah, right. <laughs> they, they, they totally should. They totally should. Um, but I um, so I'm a big fan of 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 the results that I get and uh, and how it feels in my hands. And I like the different sizes that it comes in. But you really have to treat it like a very delicate little Faberge egg. You've got to be very careful with it. Um, and it's, it's, you know, again, what works for me and what works for work works for, you know, my, my shop is not mean that works for every single freaking person. Um, other right. combs that I do use Chris Christensen shedding comb, the one with the different length teeth. I yeah. like it on my palms. I like it on my double coats. I love it on my golden. I love it on, um, they make a cat version of it, but again, like, again, you are kind of paying for a name and some of Chris Christensen stuff I can see like. They can charge me a hundred bucks for this and I'll pay for it because I know it's it's good and they got a good yeah. warranty and they stand by it. But then there's other times I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm not paying seven five dollars for this. And you have to keep in mind, I came from a time of grooming where I wish like we had ways to document the things that we bought back in the day. Yeah. Um like my grooming pack box was like a pair of double duck scissors that were like really big and then a really tiny pair and a pair of thinning shears where there was like a couple teeth missing. All my yep. home times were bent. My clipper sounded like a freaking aeroplane. When I moved to New York City, my coworker, she was like, yo, listen, if we don't work together, you need to, you like- Yeah, this I'm ain't gonna happen. Rope, you <laughs> You're gonna use my clipper for a little bit because it sounds like a freaking helicopter. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. I remember you remember you remember the lobbies, the Kim lobbies. Oh yeah. Like the, it was the most powerful clipper in the world. But like where I was going at with this is um, you know, we did so much with so little and it's so funny in these times to be like, I have nineteen different combs. 
I, I used to I used two of them. Um, so yeah. I, again, I really, really, really do like those fine finishing. I really like the finish. But to to be completely honest, like if it's not something, if it's something that is going to put you in an uncomfortable spot to buy, don't buy it. You can yeah. make beauty happen. You can make beauty happen with anything. Like most right. most of the people, I would say all of us had to work with way less at some point. Yeah. And you yeah. can make, as long as your dog is shampooed, conditioned, blow dried, loved, adored, brushed, combed, fluffed out, and, and every little tangle is out, the coat is perfect. You can, you can, you can make that shit shine with the, mm -hmm. with a $15 comb. And I say this as a product junkie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Yvonne, you? Yep. I agree. But uh, I'm a, I'm an affordable grooming shears girl. Um, yeah. I uh, I know where all these things are manufactured, and they're all manufactured in the same place. Same and um, you know, uh, affordable grooming shears has always been really good to me. Um, I worked with Stephen Toth for years and years and years, and sold for him um, up until my divorce, and I now have a non compete. So technically, I'm not selling these things. Um, yeah, but she what I home. use is he's got, he has a very, he's got a long, fine tooth comb, uh, a fine fluffing comb. And then he also has a, we have a half moon. He has a half moon comb, but it's bigger than the, the, uh, Utsumi. Um, it's, it's larger. Um, and the, now the small fine end, the teeth are the same width apart, but it's larger and more sturdier comb because I cannot, I absolutely cannot comb something with, with the Utsumi little tiny thing. Um, <laughs> I, I, it, it is way too, I'm a bull in a China shop. Like I can't, no, <laughs> I, I can't do that. And, you know, I, I used it, you know, just a few times and then, you know, I, I'd catch a snag and I would have to put it down and get something to me. I can't do that. You know, so my yeah. process is I pick up the comb I'm going to use for this dog and I use it. Um, so for me, anything that's that delicate is, is not going to work because I, you know, I, I'm going to tear it up in a heartbeat and I, you know, I'll, I'll spend money all day long on something I know that I'm going to use and I'm going to yeah. like, but you know, I bought it used on, you know, one of the Facebook pages or whatever, cause somebody else didn't like it and I got it and I used it for about a day and it's been sitting in my drawer ever since. So again, you know, we're back to, you know, like Laura said, you can make, beautiful show dogs like I do with a, a, a 15, 20, $25 comb. And, you know, I mean, I, I see poodle handlers that have been grooming poodles for 50 years. They're still using what looks like freaking kitchen shears on their dogs and they're yeah. freaking gorgeous. Yeah, I they're beautiful. You know, their hands are all gnarled up and they can't move, but those dogs are beautiful. So if you got it, you got it. <laughs> You know, you if you have the the knowledge of what you're doing, you can make that finish with you know any Anything. kind of shears if you you know if you yeah. try hard enough. I mean, when I first learned to groom, I had a pair of straight double ducks. I had a old like old fashioned oster clipper that I didn't even know was crap because that's all I knew, um, and a comb and a pair of nail clippers and like oh and by the way where I was taught, we only use skip tooth blades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it adds so I didn't even know what an F blade was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, if, if you're on a budget, affordable grooming shears has, they have, you know, the, the generic flexi brushes and combs and all of that kind of thing. But I think the bottom line is, is you, you need a fine comb to finish with. You need uh, maybe a greyhound or something that has, you know, some wider teeth on one end and the thinner teeth on the other. Um, but the bottom line is if you're first, if you're just starting out or if you're looking for something new, you know, find something that is not really heavy that fits the bill. It, whether yeah. it's two cheaper combs or or a couple of nicer combs, if you can afford it, then great. Um, but you know, really, it's 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 whatever works for you. Awesome. Um, all right, so let's. This was the big thing I wanted to get into because we have a little less than thirty minutes. Um, scissors. 
And this yeah. is the people that I work with. Um, you know, they're either just now able to, to get commission because they're trained enough or they're still even working. Um, they all want to know about scissors and they want to know what you guys think about scissors, the different, you know, different types of scissors. Um, but obviously you're going to use the different, um, you know, curved, straight, thinners, whatever, uh, throughout a groom. But like, what's, what's that one that, that you love? Like me, I love chunkers. I love them to death. Um, so I want to know that. And then afterwards, I want to talk about that ergonomic thing with holding the scissors. Cause, um, my salon manager, she just had a uh, hand surgery, but she was asking like, can you do something that talks about ways to hold the scissors, maybe different ways to hold the scissors for people with hand in injuries, that kind of thing. Um, so first I'm gonna go through with you guys. Let me know about you know your preferred type of scissors and even um, what brands you like. I'll start, we'll, we'll go with Yvonne this time first. Well, again, I'm an affordable grooming shears girl. Yes. <laughs> um, but when I was taught, all I had was straight shears, and I could make round things with straight shears. Oh, you're but, some kind of sorcerer. Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's all you have. That You learn how to do it. Um, and so, you know, I was able to do that for, you know, multiple years before I even realized there was such a thing as a curved shear. And now I will tell you the only time I pick up a straight shear is to do down the sides of a poodle top knot. And that's it. I use my curved shears for everything. Yes. I yeah. can make straight things with curved shears now. So I went the whole opposite direction. Um, and then there, you know, there, there are variations of curves. Like um, you can have something that's just curved like a little bit, or you can have something that's curved a whole yeah. lot. Um, the biggest thing with, any kind of scissors that are not the normal straight shear. What you have to remember is that anytime you bend that metal, whether it's a chunker or a thinner or a curve, when you bend that metal, you the, the, those metals have to be softer to create those shapes. So if you are not using those shears properly, if you've got your thumb all the way in the hole and you're pushing down hard, you're literally crossing those blades mm -hmm. because you're bending that. And even if you don't feel it, it's minuscule. That's why your stuff jams all the time. Yeah. Okay. So your thumb should, you know, you should have a big fat callus right there, just like I do, because that's as far as your thumb should go in that hole. And that's the biggest thing about, so I don't care what brand, I don't care if you're using even kind of crappy scissors because you're just starting out. If you, if you do that, then you, that, that keeps you from putting that thumb pressure and, and pushing those blades together. I don't know how else to explain it, but that's what a lot of groomers don't know. I didn't know that for years and years. So it's not necessarily about the brand of shear you're using. If you're using something in our, in our industry that's fairly well known, even if it's not super expensive, yeah. um, and you're constantly jamming your shears, no matter what shape or form they're in, that's your problem. You're, you're putting too much pressure on your shears. And if they're not sharp, you're putting too much pressure on your shears because you're pressing down yeah. harder with that thumb to make them work. Um, too tight, my too. Favorite, yeah. And, and they're too tight because now you've tightened them because it's not working right and you're struggling with it and you don't know what to do. Um, but that's the biggest problem. Um, you can have the best pair of chunkers on the face of the universe. It can, they can cost you a thousand dollars. And if you don't use them properly, they're going to start bending hair and they're going to start jamming because in order to create those shears, that metal has to be softer. It, that there's no way around it because yeah. in order to create those teeth and in order to create the curve and the curve and the teeth, if you're talking about curved chunkers and curved thinners, if you're not using them properly, you're going to start bending hair. And then you're going to say, Oh, I hate these things. I'm never going to use them. Yeah. They just suck. You know, you're going to throw them in a drawer and never look at them again. Well, it's like, you know, like Laura was saying about her batteries, it's user error and you just don't realize what you're doing. Um, so my favorites are my curves and my extreme curves. I use them for almost everything. Yeah. 
Sweet. Um, Laura. Um, so I, um, I, I have, I'm not even allowed to buy scissors ever again. Um, because I have one. Um, so I have, um, I have like 180, I, keep in mind I have three bands, but I have 188 pairs of scissors. Um, I don't even let scissor people talk to me anymore. Like, cool. Oh, you got, you, you got a new line. Awesome. We can't be friends. Please fuck off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I supported everybody's business, everybody's business ideas, everybody's thing. And you know what? It's great. I'm glad we have all these scissors. We're never ever. Um, but, um, you know, having a huge collection and again, because I wasn't just purchasing for myself, I'm purchasing for my staff and I want them to have what makes them happy. So we go to the shows and handle things and they would pick out what they yeah. want. And so we have a lot of scissors. Um, so um, I, of course, I have Utsumi six shears. Um, some of my favorites are the um, the J the J um, JYO line. Um, I like how they come in a variety of sizes. Some of them are four inches, four inches in curves. Some are seven, nine, ten. Um, I like how they feel. Um, I usually have the have the edges adjusted a little bit um, to have us um to have more of a micro serrated edge i feel like it grabs the hair but i can still get a nice finish um yeah. i have i have scissors with you know semi convex convex a single kind of shear you can you can possibly think of i like um kenji shinobi um little shears the pink ones um oh, but yeah, I love to those. Be completely, even though i have this huge plethora of scissors, like next next time we do the show i will do this in my van but um, yeah I that'll be fun am, I, the things that even though I, I again i love these brands i love everything i'm really partial to very teeny tiny scissors like five inches and a lot of them aren't even for pet grooming i use a lot of um japanese japanese hairdressing scissors that are like oh. this big and i will do big ass fucking dogs with them and um sorry everybody it's it's, it's wine 30 it's coming out um and it's um and I, again, just like Yvonne mentioned, um, I, when I went to school, we learned everything with straight. Um, also, when I went into grooming, I was left-handed and they were like, you're never gonna so learn how to do this right-handed. <laughs> and now I'm right dominant, which is great. Um, yeah. But so wow. I, um, and I also, when I first started grooming, I was poor. I didn't really have like a wide variety of scissors. Yeah, so everything I learned how to do was with straight. Now, I, I don't have a consistency with this. Literally, the, the, the type of whether I use curves more than straights, it's a, if I'm in a curved yeah. mood, everything is getting curved. I can do anything with curves that I can do with a straight. I can do everything with straights that I can do with a curve. Um, I, um, you know, some, some weeks I'll be using, again, really, really teeny tiny five, six inch scissors. And again, it's what's comfortable. Again, I can say that this is a brand, and this is a type, and this is the edge, and this works for me. That's what works for me. It may not work for you. Yeah. I've got tiny little, tiny little claw hands, so it's <laughs> helpful for me to have a tiny, to have tiny tool. Yeah. And I feel like I can manipulate more, um, and do more with my shears when I have less tool. Um, if I got a standard poodle with, and I've got freaking, you know, 24 inches of leg to deal with, it's a little bit of a different story. I will take out the Kenchi poodle scissors. I'll take out the Shinobis and set it in my angulation and, and do it that way. Um, but um, I really do like, and again, there's no particular brand. I, um, I had a scissor guy that I used in Manhattan that he catered more to hairdressers. So when I would check his gear and I check his wear, I'm like, man, I really like how light these are. Yeah. And the edge is amazing. These are not workhorse scissors. So you're not gonna power through, this is what you're putting your fine details on. And it's just amazing what you can accomplish um, with, with with a tiny hairdressing scissor now when we go into the chunker detailer and thinner family um and yvonne will just because she has such an extensive background in scissors she would probably be able to correctly determine the differences of these things that's just how i i remember it my chunkers i when they first came out i fell in love with them whether they were groomer brand or hairdressing brand yeah. um and I loved them. Then when detailers became a little more um, commonplace and you know, to be clear, you would have more teeth 
Um, and then on the tips of them, you would have like a couple little ridges, like a little fin, and then you would have a higher up edge that would come up and it would just knock and leave a nice soft, soft um, finish. And it would add um, texture to like a thinning coat. Yeah. Thinning shears. You're, and again, whether I have thinning shears that are 250 bucks and I have thinning shears that are $35. And I do a lot of drop coat work, a lot of basically taking a nightmare coat and putting it into um, an inch and a half of hair all over and trying to make that look cute and cute yeah. for the picture, cute out the door and cute for the weeks that you get to watch that dog walk around in, in yeah. the service area. So my techniques of some dogs, I just do entirely with thinning shears and detailers. So um, I have a lot of technique that's, um, that's scissor over comb. I had um, a hairdresser working with me for a number of years. And so I learned a lot of weird techniques from her, from watching her when I was teaching her and and she was teaching me all. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you're working on a drop coat, you know, we all know what happens. If you throw a guide coat, you're not going to have a good time. <laughs> you're not yeah. going to have a time at all. You've just created an extra 40 minutes worth of work. Um, and when you use blunt scissors, no matter how skilled you are, you're creating extra steps and extra work, especially when you can't manipulate that coat to do things that, that, it's not going to do. Gravity is going to determine that for you. With thinning shears, it is allowing yourself to create little shelves in the hair that is going to give lift and lock. Mm -hmm. So you can create a shape while working with the dog's anatomy and working with gravity. And, you know, I, I've just been so fascinated how far thinning shears have come merging the grooming industry, barber industry, and the hairdressing industry. Yeah and they're making amazing products. And again, you can spend $35 on a pair, a pair of thinning shears, have rock star edges on them from a skilled sharpener, or you can buy, you know, a Rolls Royce and, you know, make the investment on an expensive shear, either or the results are the same. Um, so that's been my experience with thinners. Chunkers, I've really shied away from over the years. Um, mainly the weight. The weight has become an issue with me. In the beginning, it was user error because, again, my thumb was positioned and was positioned poorly. And I found that the shanks were too long in the beginning when they first started coming out. They've since, since you know, the 2000, early, um, mid 2000s, 2010, um, they've made a wide variety of different shanks to fit every every groomer can so i you know i'm happier to see more design styles yeah i really shied away from them because once the detailers came out you can really just wipe out so much coat create texture create volume flawless edges with not having to take a finishing shear to it afterwards some of these crazy styles that you create with the faces you can completely take a chin to the length of a 4f with a detailer in literally yeah. three seconds um, and, you know, um, another brand that I've, you know, that I've um, tried over the years that I was really impressed with. I did not want to be impressed with it because I didn't need any more fucking scissors. Evolution shears. Yes. Um, I, I, um, I had one of my employees fitted for them and, um, I was like, you know, shit, I really like how this feels. And so I bought one. Then my other employee came over. She's like, well, shit, I want one. And you know, you get a little nervous when you're when you're trying a new tool, and um, and I have to say the learning curve was very quick. Was very quick, and again, I really, really like how when you're in those really hard to reach areas and you're putting a profile, even on like even on a poodle, yeah, and how you're able to really just 360 degrees do a leg without really having to adjust yourself. Um, and to touch on you know obviously what Yvonne said with your thumb being in the right place. Um, and how you're handling your scissors, how you're opening and closing, the pressure of your scissor. The other most important thing is your posture and keeping your wrist straight. Yes. Pay attention when you go to work and see how your wrist is. And if you're bending it, put a brace on. I realized until I had six years into this, this, this industry that I was holding my scissors incorrectly and I was getting in pain at a young age, I put a brace, I noticed that the pain was immediately gone and it wasn't because of the brace. It was because it wasn't bending my wrist. So I can't stress it enough that your wrist should not be bending while you're grooming. And I'm going to wrap this up because we got eight more minutes. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> Bree, Bree, scissors, go. <laughs> hey, well, I'll I'll just chime right there on that evolution shears, um, because I'm more of like a, a a meat and potatoes groomer, the bread and butter, what I need to get me through, um, because I've only been in the industry professionally for ten years, and a lot of what I got in my kit when I went to school was enough to get me through. I added and I experimented. But I've also had the joy of moving around, which means I've worked for a lot of different people and I've been exposed to a lot of different equipment and, and products and techniques and, and ways of life. Um, but the evolution shears were the first year that I bought outside of my kit the same year that I was graduating this school. And uh, evolution shears really snagged me right away because they really did know their scissors and how to fit them to me and made me feel really comfortable because that was like my first big investment yeah. aside from mm -hmm. school. Uh, Cause I mean, they, they were not cheap to me at that point. And uh, the, she even went so far as to have me close my eyes and compare. She's like, this scissor is this yep. one. Does this one feel better or this one? This one or this one? This one or this one? And I, I ended up I saying, <laughs> Oh, like, yeah, were you get were you at the optometrist? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. She had me change up so many times and she's like, okay, based upon your answers, this is the setting you need. And customer service has always been really great. And seeing their demonstration and why you should have more movement in all of this to prevent issues, I said, well, I don't have a lot of experience in this and I don't have pain, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it really did. And they, they are, I get the long ones. I like them really long. That's how uh, and that's, that's kind of my, my thing that people make fun of me for. Yvonne has seen me groom my tiny poodle with these long nine inch scissors. Yeah. And, but... I was the one that I was the same way taught that you do everything with with straights first. You got to know how to do it this way. Everything else will just make it a little bit easier on you going yeah. forward. So I have a tendency to yeah. just stick to the, the stuff. I mean, like I said, for years, I had the, the set from Gator in 2013 and I maintained them. I had them sharpened. Um, I got a free pair of chunkers from one of my teachers. I think they were just Oster chunkers she says i can't get these to work for me i put a finger ring in there they work i still have them and every time they go to the sharper uh, sharpener i cry a little because i i love having them around i really like the long ones now it seems like the shorter ones are what is more available um and i just don't like them as much because i like a long scissor when you can do a lot in one time yeah. i've got a lot of surface area to cover and I can cut more because I see this line. And the same with the with the curve shears. Like they were saying, you can just kind of flip it around and you can do a straight line if you know where that line is. Yeah. No, that's that's what I was gonna say. For me, it's interesting because when I was going to learn, they had me get a nine inch, it's either nine or ten inch Kenji Scorpion curve. Cause then I could flip it around and I knew exactly where I could use it for a straight. And I had no money when I started. I, that's what I had to do for a long time with those scissors before I could start getting, you know, thinners and then, you know, found out about the chunkers and I could actually get a straight and a curve and not have to use just the curve to do it all. Um, <laughs> and it's also for me though, because I started with something so long, I'm always very partial to longer scissors. I mean, now I'm, I'm at like about an eight inch. I think that's, that's healthy for my hand. Um, but I'll freak people out because I'll have like the small dogs and I'm going around their face and I'm using like my eight inch scissors and they're like, oh my God, you're going to do this. It's like, no, I honestly feel way less comfortable holding the small scissors. I don't, I don't know why I actually don't feel like I, I'm going to do a good job or like I, I'd be more afraid I'd poke a dog's eye out with the four inch scissors than my nine inch ones because <laughs> you're just so used to it. Um, I'm also I, a big advocate for scissor of the month clubs. If you can yeah. fork out the money to sign up for a box club, if you want to figure out what shears are good for you and what you like, sometimes just having them forced down your throat to try out is the way to go. I forgot about those. I was always curious. Is there like any particular one that's better? Than um, my shop is currently bringing in one of the subscription boxes and I don't know what it is, but I think they're primarily is the Foxy Roxy, is that a brand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot coming out from them. 
there has been a lot coming out from them. They send different mm -hmm. sizes and different shapes and different colors and uh, just having different sizes <laughs> and shapes and curves has been nice. Especially because I don't have to they're, pay for they're, them. They're, yeah. I, I, lo I love what's going on on this side of the screen because there was a time, there's a very dark time in subscription box years of 2016 and 2017 where it was just, there was, I'm not naming names, but just horrible oh we all know who uh -huh. it is you don't have to we all watched it unfold <laughs> yes. it was a drama we we all tuned in i i don't know what this I think, is but i think we made a shit talk group about it there was like really <laughs> angry oh yeah there was a whole angry people just about really oh yeah and then somebody chimed that. in oh it no Oh, yeah. Customer service, you complained you would have a mob of like freaking 900 teenagers ruining your life. <laughs> um, it Do was you know so she's doing this out of her garage? She is only one person. We are humans. That's what I saw a lot of. I'm like, okay, you're not getting my money. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> well, I was going to say right now, the place that I work at, they used to do their, um, you know, you get your grooming kit. And when I had to sell all my stuff during the pandemic, because you weren't allowed to groom where I was. So I signed, a, I signed a little contract with this corporation just so I could get a groomer's kit and start working. And now I'm buying all my stuff, getting, a, a, getting back to where I was, but they were, um, it was Andis was the people that produced their kits. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it, it's, it's Andis, you know, and uh, that's the kit I got. Well, then it had to have been just a month after, I, I started and I guess they switched to Foxy Roxy brand, but even clippers. And I didn't even know they had clippers, but they should switch back to Andis, according to all the new groomers. <laughs> one thing so. I hate, the one thing I hate that happened to scissors. Um, it, there was a point where we stepped, we stepped away from, you know, ergonomics and practicality and functionality yeah. and there was what i like to call the shiny suit period i'm actually kind of quoting the shiny suit period of hip-hop where he was yeah. wearing glittery suits well that's what happened is scissors. like everything was blings and had charms and all this fucking bullshit and it was just like you could put lipstick on a pig it's still a pig and yeah. so i, I mm. and there was like pink one one so normally if i see when i see um colored brightly colored things like i know what you're doing yeah doing. you're trying to speak to my generation you're like oh shiny i have to have it yeah the candy um, shop and again i i i very quickly realized like wait a minute this is shit i gotta stop even though it's not expensive i gotta stop buying shit because this is shit like mm -hmm. this is not something like it, it, when you you look at your sharpener's face because your yes. sharpener typically isn't going to lie to you you look at your sharpener's face when he's shi when he's not shining when he's sharpening your shit and if you see <laughs> then you know that you've been con into mm -hmm. glitter shit and you know yeah. you shouldn't have to litter uh, you know at so many companies so many fizzer companies have had their rises and falls. There's been brands that have been around for decades that literally predate even my existence. Yeah. That had their heyday and they were great and they sank and they came back or whatever. But I remember the first nice pair of scissors I invested in when I was 21 years old. Um, they were the Guybe Cheetahs. Yep. Yeah. And I swear to God, I drove the gas. I drove to work on fumes. And I, I, I used to smoke Newport Box 100s and I would make sure to like cut back the cigarettes and cut back on spending money. I was like literally microwaving hot dogs for freaking lunch every day so I could buy this kit. And I remember going to Hershey and going there and smiling. And I forget the name of the, the dad that like started the company. And I bought my Ed. set um, of the Cheetah set. And um, I was so happy. I still have those scissors, and I will never give that company a dime of my fucking money ever again. <laughs> but I nope. still have scissors. Because their customer service loved... fucking sucks. Thank you! But literally, those yep. scissors were everything to me. And it's just like, mm -hmm. there's something yeah. about, there's something that yeah. happens to you psychologically when you buy yourself a shiny toy. And um, you just, your, your confidence goes up. And confidence is such an amazing 
I'm, when you get that dopamine up and you're feeling yep. good, like I just spent all this, I didn't eat well for two weeks, so I can buy this. And <laughs> you feel really, really, really good. It was such a nice workhorse scissor. It just plowed through freaking everything. And it just felt, it was my first mm -hmm. big ass scissor that I ever felt good using. They were, I had them in eight and a half inches. I liked the holes in it. I didn't even, I was just like, please make these lighter. And they make my grooms better. And I <laughs> yeah. absolutely love them. And I still have them. And, you know, I, I literally, I only get them sharpened maybe like once once a year, if even that, because I don't really use them all that often. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so, you know, you know, the one thing I can give a lot of these companies that have been around forever and a day for changes, whether it's customer service went down the toilet or shipping speed went down the toilet or presence went down the toilet or they just yeah. don't have a social media well um those tools that were bought back then are still here today there's lots of things that are being produced now that i don't see the groomers today purchasing some of these kinds of things are going to be 10 15 years down the road saying i still got them they're going to be like oh yeah, yeah here's the drawer where they sleep and we cut ribbon with them. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and it's not the price yeah, that is. makes the impact. It's not the price that makes the impact. There are scissors that are literally 89 bucks and that are great. There's scissors that are 800 yeah. bucks that are also great. It's not price that makes that thing. It's a, obviously taking care of your tools, oiling them, managing humidity in your mobile. So you don't destroy and rust your shit. Um, and, uh, big one. you know, and how often you're sharpening. Um, how you're sharpening, sharpening, painting your tools and stuff like that. And things are important, but when you have things that are focusing, focusing more on the materials you use and sling that makes it look aesthetically pleasing to us, then you're going to have an entirely different experience with your tools. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, is there anything else y'all want to talk about with scissors? Cause I know I just want to, I want to answer Angela um she just posted unpopular opinion but i've bought very nice expensive scissors but i drop mine on the daily i would pre i would end up upset with myself for ruining scissors so i prefer to buy cheaper pairs that work great blah 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 sharpening a nice pair of scissors would cost me more than just buying another cheaper pair that would last um i totally get that but <laughs> again you know, Steven's probably going to shoot me because he's going to get a bunch of orders for these. But we actually did a video with affordable grooming shears on their Mako line because I discovered that I could drop them and pick them back up and continue to work with them. That's the Mako line from affordable grooming shears. Yeah. So if you are a klutz or you have, you know, a, a place where you work where you can't have a mat, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Or you're one of these people that drops your stuff all the time. That line of shears, and it didn't really take off I, because I think nobody believed us. Yeah. I can literally drop those Makos four or five times and they still work great. Um, awesome. and, and they're, they're wonderful. I, I don't know why. I don't know what the reason is. But, you know, when I told Steven about it, we did a whole video about it. Um, and they're not super expensive. I think when we were selling, and he still probably has them on his site. We have to double check and look. But I, I think we were charging like $45, $50 a pair. Yeah. I, I know what line you're talking I, about. They're very Yeah. I mean, I, I dropped the curves and the thinners multiple times and picked them back up and was like, oh, well, okay, Stephen will fix it, you know, because I'm testing mm -hmm. these years out. And I start grooming again, and they're still freaking working like nothing happened. And I told him about it, and we made this video about it, and it's all over the internet if you look for it. But it didn't take off because I don't think people believed us. Because There is no such thing. Yeah. There's no, it's not possible. <laughs> you know, they don't believe you, but it's true. So well, Angela, that, and they're not, they're not like, um, you know, you know what Laura was talking about. They weren't all blinged out either. No. Yeah. Well, the I mean, Mako's there's a little very... red, like there's a little red gem thing in the dial or something, but yeah. not, mean, enough. not enough. Not you know, enough. We can forget enough. that. And, we can you know, forget that. We can forget that. <laughs> yeah. But you know, back to the, the sparkle thing, like if it's not brand new or it's not super shiny, you know, everybody else in the world is not like us. They all yeah. want it. 
So, you know, as a, you know, as a, as a person that used to sell retail grooming supplies, if it's not, you know, something special, so to speak, it doesn't sell. Yeah. Um, we get people all the time that want left-handed shears. Like you were saying before, it was difficult to get them, but you know, we would order them in specifically for people and then they wouldn't buy them. Yeah. So now they're sitting in Steven's warehouse, you know, and he's invested all this money in all these left-handed shears and no freaking buddy's buying them. Yeah. So we got fed up with it. And yeah. so he didn't, we didn't do left-handed curve chunkers. We didn't do left-handed this or that. So I don't know what the reason is, but you know, maybe they weren't fancy as the right-handed shears or whatever it was, but it was definitely something. Yeah. Um, but the, the Makos, if, if you guys want a reasonably priced pair of shears that, you know, and I, and I don't sell for him anymore, so I'm not getting anything from this. Um, they, they're absolutely fantastic. I use mine at, at least three or four times a week. I love their thinning shears. They've got like a, the tooth of the curve of the thinning shears is actually curved and it's got yeah. a serrated tip on it. So it actually grabs the hair and you can, I, I have one pair. I've got the longer ones. I don't remember what we called them. But they're about this long in their thinning shears, and every yeah. and they're little tiny short. They're really close together, and everybody's like, "Well, how do you do anything with that? It looks like it's not going to take anything off." I can whack off so much hair with those shears; it's not even funny. Yeah. But they have even; they've got even handles on them, and I even handles work for me. Even handles don't work for everybody. Um, you know, sometimes if you know, depending upon again the shape of your hand or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're, if you drop shears all the time, yeah, you, I could see, I understand where Angela's coming from, <laughs> you know, exactly. you don't want to yeah, drop a $250 well. pair of oh, shears. Yeah, Angela, I am a mega klutz and you know, it wasn't a big deal when I was in a salon because a lot of the stations had them. So it wasn't like an incredibly big deal to a wagon tail. Our floors are made out of the same material a city bus floor is made out of and i very quickly realized like oh god i have a problem yeah, yeah. so um <laughs> i cover my is covered i have foam mats um and layer one and then layer two i have bartender mats um over them and it has saved my ass degree um yeah and um another thing that has helped is um the rester holsters um, that, that you can wear on your hip. And if you're not a wear on your hip kind of person, you can take it and hang it right on your grooming arm. Yeah. And then that holster is right there. And you just psychologically make that mental note. The mm -hmm. scissor goes here, the scissor goes there. Um, I also recently invested in, I was having problems with, you know, scissor holder, the, um, the root. I was using that for a number of years and I was noticing my scissors were dulling and I was having yeah. problems with it. So I threw away the root um, and I got butcher block wood and I found somebody on Etsy, and again, I can message, I can, I can message this um, to one of y'all because I, again, I'm super flaky with with messages. I'm working on it. I really am. Sorry, right. um, forgive me. I, 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 Laura, this, don't this, tell everybody. <laughs> um, I'm making so, these. Yeah. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, not sharing shit. But the concept is a butcher block that holds yes. scissors. And basically yep. the wood is the best material. Um, I no longer have, and my sharpener can attest to this, I'm not having the problems that I used to. Um, and um, so the scissors, I, again, my workstation is, I used to be a bartender, so it's built for efficiency, meaning I don't have to move out of my 153 square inch spot. <laughs> yep. I can just <laughs> right bend here. and grab what I need. I'm just like, oh, I'm over here. You need a mojito, you need a haircut. I got you covered. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the um, my scissors are right in that right in that block. So I can just reach and I grab and I put the, I, I look at the, the type of dogs I have for the day and I set my favorites that I know I'm gonna use for that yeah. day. And it holds up to nine cigarettes, not cigarettes. Um, we were just talking about those salons at the beginning where yeah I'm wondering how and the health department just grab them exactly i think we've all worked at them and that way you can describe what you need and put it back what yeah. happens to a lot of people especially when you have a lot of table 
um, the table becomes the place where your array of shit goes. And you know, and you start looking at it, and you're like, this is fine. And then it's not fine. And then it falls. Right. <laughs> and so that's why I yep. try to just keep it out of my head that my table holds anything other than my sandwich. That's all. <laughs> just the sandwich. <laughs> Lunch. Um, I did want to say real quick, especially for the viewers, because this is what I've been telling people at my work, especially the newer groomers. Because um, right now with the state of the economy and everything it's hard to just throw down a, a, you know not buying the highest end stuff but just to get yourself like a nicer pair of scissors it's it's hard to do and um and no, none of what i'm going to say is sponsoring me i just love it um uh, i i love kenji first and foremost just never done me wrong customer service is amazing but right now they have klarna and uh um, yep laura knows about klarna but what you can do is you can go and, you know, go through, get, get the stuff that you like. And then you have the option to see what your payments would be with Klarna. And they either have a like, um, what, four payment, four payment installment or something like that. Or you can get a 12 month payment plan and it'll automatically come out. It's, it's going to be the exact same amount every single month. And they have a little app where you can go in and you can see like how much you have left to pay it. It's great. It's I love it. Less painful that way. <laughs> no, I mean, it Well, it works when you need, cause I needed better scissors right. with the whole yeah. starting over basically. And I really wanted a, a decent, a decent, um, what level they use levels with Kenji. Um, and yeah. I got the rose gold ones and I got a whole like four piece set and exactly the, um, the length I need. And then I got those Kenji, uh, clippers with the little clipper blades and it's it's been great it's so easy to and pay. you could afford to still pay your bills while yes. you got the yes. stuff that you needed to expand yeah on your I, I have to say and that that's a game that's changer okay. it's been really 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 great that a lot of um smaller retailers have tapped into the Klarna market um and what i like about Klarna yes, is I it, saw doesn't that on the app. it doesn't doesn't encourage reckless spending because it won't allow you to attach credit cards to payments. It only allows you to attach cards with the debit option. So yes. that way you're not putting credit on credit. So I like it right. how it's not very borrowing it's not what from Jack to as, pay Jim or whatever. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, thing, yeah. It, it encourages responsible spending. There are a company that's been been around now, I think about six years, and they've really taken <laughs> off. And um, it just kind of allows you know, it allows people to invest in themselves, especially if you don't have like perfect credit or if you're young and you're just starting mm -hmm. out and you need to drop freaking a thousand dollars on something. Um, so it's, it's definitely great. And more and more retailers are catching on to it. And if you're dealing with a vendor that you want to buy from and they don't have the option, bring it to their attention, send it to an email yeah. saying, you know what, I would love to buy from you. I would love to, I would love to buy and do, do a big order. Um, would you, you know, would your company consider uh, working or partnering with Klarna and, um, or any of the other, you know, payment apps that allows you to pay over time? Because, you know, especially during the time as the time of plenty becomes the time of less, yes. you know, it allows people to still invest in themselves, still do right for themselves without putting themselves in a bad position. Yeah. And I just want to say, you can talk to your bosses, these small, small shop people owned by a mom and pop, you, you work directly with people, for people, ask them, say, I could really benefit from trying this out, or I need this to do my job. Can yeah. you perhaps buy it for me? And I buy it off you or buy it for the shop. And then you have Night, it. You're, 100%. That's That's how you're it just starting a me. dialogue. I paid, uh, I paid conversation. back my boss. So a little bit came out of my, uh, my paycheck and went to pay for like my entry level. I just started stuff. Yep. Which worked great then, but it's also, there's always kind of weird stuff that can happen. So you really got to oh, yeah. make sure you talk, talk it out. But no, I just, I really want to make sure I mentioned that because I know a lot of the girls that are just starting in the salon I'm at, they really appreciated to know that they could like, yeah, go that's, there. That's if you, if you work for that. an owner, oper if you work for an owner operator, chances are they want you to have the best of the best. And if they aren't mm -hmm. already, yep. I, me personally, I provide my staff with everything with most mobile. So that is the case, but by, by providing everything, I mean, Hey, you look around on my van and mm -hmm. if there's a tool 
that you're more comfortable and happy or working with, you tell me whatever it is you want, I'm going to buy it. When they go to the dog show, they have a line of credit. They can buy whatever they want. That's awesome. And I'll pay for their shows. I'll pay for all their bullshit. Like you want to compete, I will pay for it. It's, it's, it's yep. what works in our, in our perk system. But if you yeah. talk to any owner operator, anybody, any groomer that's worth a salt and gives a shit about their shop, can you say like, hey, I'm kind of broke skis. I would really like to invest in myself and invest in your your product, invest in your yeah. your salon and 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 be able mm -hmm. to do be more efficient, do better. They will totally cop up the money. That groomer operator though is is a big deal. If you work for somebody who is not a groomer, this is a whole different conversation and a whole different ball game because I've been yeah. in that boat yeah. and those That's people true. do not understand. And they don't if, get if it. If you're one of those groomers watching that have to work for somebody who's never groomed, never had any professional mm -hmm. training, and you're feeling like you're drowning, you're not alone. <laughs> you have yeah. you have been yeah. through the you same thing be... that a lot of us have. You have to be more aggressive about it. I, I would literally, I would be like, all right, so here's the deal. I'm not going to be able to go to work on Monday because I need this thing. And my paycheck is this much <laughs> and this thing I need is this much. So you might have to cancel all the appointments Monday because I need to sit. I need to sit at home and figure out how I'm going to whore myself on the Internet to get this money. And they, <laughs> what should I do on OnlyFans to buy these scissors? Do you know yeah, what strip club is hiring? <laughs> I know I'm gonna I'm gonna have to literally I'm gonna have to get my walker out. I'm like, all right, here we go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Even my bird finds it funny. Right now, it's right now. It is it is it is that time where groomers can kind of call the shots a little more there is a national groomer short so if you're working for somebody that's a little tight and uh tight on the purse strings and they're being shitty about it and be like hey listen i need this thing money's not great right now this isn't great right now so one of two things needs to happen you need to increase your prices so i can afford to buy these things right fucking now or i need you know i need you to help me so i can help this business and at, when yeah. you're talking to an owner and um you're talking to an owner that's not an operator you just need to talk in in the sense of money you need to Take, the, take a moment to put on their hat and what they're spending and what they're investing and what their returns is and how you can increase those returns. And when you talk to them like a business owner, they're going to respect you more because I have to wear both hats. I get to, yeah. I, I think like an employee yep. and I think like a business owner. And if you approach them in a way that like, hey, I want to help your business, they're going to respect you more. Um, if they shoot down that, then they're just an asshole and get on. A yeah, you have to be ready to walk away. Job. Because yeah. at most 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 business owners right now are like walking on eggshells with their employees because literally they can change their entire situation in a snap. So mm -hmm. literally, yeah. it's a good time to be a groomer. It's a bad time to be a shitty boss. Yeah, yep. And yeah. I see it. On I mean, the it's Facebook always a bad time. Constantly. Yeah. They're like, I don't know where all the groomers are. Why can't I find any? Where are they? Like, like there's some sort of shiny unicorn Pokemon. Well, sorry, Karen, you're still char charging $45 for a Shih Tzu, and I can't make any money yeah. off that. Oh, but it doesn't matter oh, to Karen. Karen yeah, has a whole horrible. retail section that pays all of her bills. The grooming is just something that she offers to her clients. So when I say I can't make money off of it, she says, well, I can't raise these prices. These people have been here their entire lives and in the entire Fluffy's lives. And luckily i can move wherever i really want to and i've yeah. been able to walk away from some of these situations that literally took advantage of me or refused to move or questioned me when i was the professional in this dedicated spot of your business i say i can't do it you say it can be done that's my straw like i yeah. gotta go yep yep exactly all right guys um is there anything else you guys wanted to touch on with tools or equipment uh, before we wrap this up, I know we went a little over uh, when I'd, I'd want it to end, but we also we had some technical difficulties, so stuff got pushed a little Sorry. back. But stuff happens, but <laughs> is there anything else what you guys happens? wanted to comment on? Anything like that? Um, I, got, I, want, I got, oh, sorry, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, I, I really think that uh, there are a lot of groomers that bulk at a clipper back, but yet every time i go on to these professional sites and facebook these pages professional groomer network all i run one you know everybody's always complaining about hair splinters get a fucking clipper vac yes 
You will never Daddy. have another hair splinter. Stop petting the dogs as you groom them and get a clipper vac. You'll never have another one again. It's that yeah. simple. Because yep. when you cut the hair, oh, and stop pre clipping. Don't clip and bathe and then clip again. Because now you got a piece of hair that has a sharp edge on each end. Yeah. Good. So it's the most important thing with the clipper vac is bathe and dry and then use it. So you know, I mean, I know, I I know we're running the dogs I that are with a matted clipper vac. And, what? I pre cut with a clipper back with a guy when i don't deal with a ton of mats but i will put a snap on and just rough clip bulk if i'm going shorter is that bad oh yeah that's fine but again yeah. like people you know everybody always complains about hair splinters and i'm telling mm. you that is the number one thing i noticed when i got a clipper back i used to have them in between the webs of my fingers i'd get them in my elbows constantly and i was literally with, i'd get them with, in my nipples and that was just with, you, you know, <laughs> I can make you every once in a All while. All right, listen, Carissa, this is, you know, you should not be grooming naked. I'm not. <laughs> it's just, they're attractive and the hair just finds their way there. It does. Well, you know, it, they you love you. Do? I mean, if you groom in front of a window, you could have, like, we used to, where I learned to groom, we had this giant window, the fishbowl, right? So I said to the girl that taught me how to groom years and years ago, Tasha, if you're watching, I know you remember <laughs> this. I said, you know, we should have like one of those things because like people would stand in front of the window. I'm like, Tip they should have a quarter in for the little shade to go up. Oh. Like they have a gentleman's club. And then you'll Skip the self serve. Quarter. You know? Quarter to view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, that topless dog grooming is a thing. Wait, maybe maybe pitch this idea for a mobile. No, that's, mobile that's with like a plexiglass plan. and you just you can just oh, oh yeah, we are in the technology, aren't we? Coins are gonna be outdated yeah. here in a minute. <laughs> What's a coin? <laughs> what is a coin? Coin? Oh Lord! Okay, or, your debit card. Debit card. Soon it's <laughs> going to be like, what's the debit minute? card? Just use my phone. But anyway, I really feel yeah, like equipment. Vax. You know, equipment and tool wise, I really feel like yes, they're expensive, but you know that thousand dollars. You can also get the bill for the. I was yes, going to say they can find it too. Plan from Klarna, okay. But that medical bill from the hospital to lance that shit and drain it and put mm -hmm. you on antibiotics is going to cost you how much? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I haven't. It's had a huge a amount of cleanup time too. 2014. Oh wow! Oh, well, I haven't had a hair. Lucky you. 2014. And I use clip, <laughs> clipper back. Yeah. Clipper back. Yep. The clipper And back I got my fantastic. first one as a broke piece of shit, and I find that shit right through them, and I never look back on that investment. Yep. And every single one of my bands has them. They're great. Yep. Awesome. My shop wants to have one for every single station after seeing, I insisted on it and she, she brought it in for me. Um, and now she, she wants one for every station. So hopefully next yep. year. That's, I never, oh. I never got a chance to use one. So I hope someday I can. We didn't talk at all about bathing systems. I, I, oh, I was thinking about yeah. it, but I, cause I was going to say I had, um, in my hand bee trailer, I had the um, the bathing beauty, and I love that. Now mm -hmm. that tub has the um, I think it's a ballast pump at, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so you actually would push a button to suck all the water out because mm -hmm. you, you put yep. you know, the two inches, the bathing beauty, and everything. And man, it was a pain in the ass when I had to change that that pump yeah. out by myself. But other yeah, I hear they get fried pretty often too. The um, the hand V vans for. Um, for mobile units, they had that suck out option too. And if there was yeah. even a little hair in there, my boss with her three hand V vans said that that was a really common issue that fuses really? would constantly blow because hair was being like sucked in to the motor basically. Oh. Uh, I worked out of their, their DIY mobile units and they didn't have that suction. It was just gravity fed to the bottom. Yeah, I just right. really like DIY sometimes better than than all those bells and whistles. Yeah, that's I, literally, I literally my, my I, tub is, I a, use a, is a fiberglass. And my tub is a fiberglass thing that we actually, we were going to sell at one point. 
but it's actually got like a raised part in the center and there's a channel all the way around the outside and all the water drains into a little reservoir where the um, free circulator is. And I never have issues with hair. I, you just get the correct sump pump that has a filtration system in the bottom and you won't have that issue. Laura, I, um, I, yeah, I, um, I use, I mean, I predominantly froth everything, but I do have a recirculating system, the super sudzer that comes with the van. Um, there's a filtration cup in the back. So every couple of days you open up the cup, you clean out the little filter screen, you screw it back in and you know, you, it, it's good to go. Um, you run vinegar through it every night to, to basically yep. flush out and just dis disinfect it. Um, before I had multiple drains on both sides of the tub, um, which made the sub I had to park in a certain way before I had multiple drains put on either side. I was also using an Oscar power bather, which again, it's a expensive lazy man way out. If you don't want to just buy the sub pump, buy the pump and do it yourself. <coughs> I've seen people literally recreate that $500 piece of equipment by spending $45. Um, yeah. yep. I used it for a number of years. It was great, but like pretty much I predominantly froth everything. Um, you know, unless I have like a really, really, really like big sheddy, dirty dog where I want to do a pre bath first to get all the bunk out. You know, I'll use my super sudzer in that, in that instance. The, um, the only other thing that I wanted to touch, touch on was, um, you know, tools, tools are great. <coughs> Combs, scissors, all these things that we talked about today. As important as they are, one of the most important processes, and I say this as somebody that started out as a bather in 1995, um, the most important part of the groom is the bath and the dry. Yep. And while process and procedure has changed so much over the years, your pro your products, your procedures is what makes the rest of it. Like I have tools that collect dust that I barely need to use anymore because the shampoo step the conditioning yeah. step, the blowout step, the, the vinegar, the, you know, the 50, 50 vinegar water step or the apple cider vinegar water step. Um, and then with the dry, by the time that dryers off, you are effortlessly taking a comb and just making sure that everything's perfect and you're done like for, for your prep. Everything after that is just the haircut. So, I mean, the, I can't stress the importance of good shampoos, good conditioners. We could talk for about four hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about shampoos and products. Um, it's, it's, it's so important to shampoo. It's so important to condition. It's so important to, um, to use vinegar, um, in your finishing process. And you will be so happy with how much less work you have to do with your hands as a result. Yeah. All right. Well, my bird has a lot to say. So wait, I'll, wait, I'll wrap this wait, up. Wait. Yeah, it's like the psycho. She's doing the psycho music. <laughs> yeah, Levi, thanks. The last, like, what, four shows you've been quiet. My <laughs> daughter's still awake, and he can hear her upstairs. And it's I was going to say, where's your daughter? <laughs> that's why, that's why. Okay, anyways, guys, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I know we had some issues at the beginning, um, but it all seems to be good now besides my bird. So um, if you guys just want to, I'm going to take you off the screen, but then still chill while I finish this up as quickly as I can. This is my house all the time, 24 uh, seven. <laughs> and the dog and, and the daughter and the TV. Yay. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on, having this nice little chat about tools and equipment. I think there was a lot of, uh, a lot of good information, especially for, for those that are starting out. Thank you guys again. And especially Bree and Laura, it's your first time on. Thanks for coming on and talking to us. Thanks All for right, having guys. me. Awesome. Thanks. All right, guys. Oh my God, he's being quiet. Okay. Had a good, good time. Uh, obviously technical difficulties here and there. It happens. This is a brand new streaming platform I've never used before. So I was super nervous at the beginning to make sure this all worked out, but it did. Um, I'm still going to be discussing with people what we want to go over next time. If you have any ideas, anything you really, really want to, to have some professionals talk about, definitely um, you can drop a comment in this video and it'll pop up wherever you decided to put it, Twitch, 
um, Facebook, YouTube, I'll get a notification, I'll see it. And I can uh, bring it up to all the lovely people that I work with. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for coming. And again, a shout out to Ooh La La Spa Wear for sponsoring us. I was wearing this um, this smock the entire time. And I, I thought it was going to get way too hot in it. I didn't. I, I'm wearing something under it. I am. I promise. And um, I didn't get too hot. It, I don't feel super constrained sitting here for two and a half hours. So uh, again, definitely go give them a shot. OolalaSpaWear.com. Now my dog is playing with a squeaky toy. So it's a good time to stop. Thank you all for 